Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that we link with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Now, I was going to be doing a show outside today, but it's baking, baking hot outside there today. It's over 30 degrees this morning. I know that you guys are in the midst of a bit of a heat wave in uh, England, if you're watching it for over there. Um, but over here in Russia, it's just been so, so hot, especially in the mornings. You wouldn't think that about Russia. You'd think Russia... Minus 20, minus 30, everybody wrapped up in that. But the summers are very, very hot here. And um, it's been great weather for the World Cup so far. It's, you know, shorts and T-shirts weather all the way. Now, the World Cup was great yesterday. I mean, there was a lot of VAR issues to do with a lot of the games. Um, if you want to find out more about what we thought of the VAR stuff, make sure you check out um, the Bias World Cup show with me and Troops later on. But... Um, also, there were some good performances um, from various teams and uh, Uruguay put in a great performance against the host Russia, beating them by three goals to nil. And uh, as well as Suarez playing brilliantly in the game, one of the standout performances was from Lucas Torreo, who of course is Arsenal bound as we know. Um, if you listen to all of the rumours that have been flying around, he put in a great performance, looked just like the sort of player that we need. Right in the middle of the park, Kept breaking up play, winning it. His passing was really good. Um, his delivery on set pieces was good. He takes free kicks. This guy looked a really, really good player. Um, listen, you can never judge players off the World Cup, but he had a great season, of course, um, in Serie A as well. And I really, really like what I saw yesterday. Now, really interestingly, yesterday, um, there was an agent being asked about one of his... Um, clients um, and Arsenal's possible link to it. Um, his player um, is uh, Stanislav Lobokta. Uh, Lobokta is you know, a very good player, plays for Celta Vigo, plays in the midfield and uh, there's said to be a lot of uh, you know, a lot of rumours flying around that Arsenal are really, really interested in signing him. Now his agent, Branislav uh, Jurasek, um, confirmed literally that uh, Lucas Torreira is going to be coming to Arsenal. Because when he was asked about his client, um, he said, he said, Arsenal have bought Torreira to play six. So I don't think it's going to happen. That's what he told the Italian media when he was asked about links of Lobotka to um, join in Arsenal. So it seems common knowledge out there amongst the agents, and that's always a um, pretty positive sign, that, you know... Torreira is coming in. Maybe he would have had talks with Arsenal or maybe he would have discussed with Arsenal because what a lot of these agents will do is when there are sort of rumours flowing around, they'll get in contact with the club and they you know, because they can do it this time um, during the transfer window and they'll say, you know, how serious are you about, you know, bringing our player in, you know, Lobotka? Are you interested in him? The price will be this amount, etc., etc. He's obviously contacted Arsenal and Arsenal have obviously said to him, listen, we're cool on that position. We're getting in Lucas Torreira. So he more or less letting it out of the bag yesterday that Lucas Torreira is going to be joining Arsenal. It's the worst kept secret around at the moment. But Torreira, um, from what I see, is going to be a really, really good addition to the club. Also yesterday, um, the sporting director of uh, Borussia Dortmund being asked about Socrates. Now, what has happened to Socrates? I told you ages ago that this guy has signed. He has signed. He's been down to the ground. He's had his medical. He's done all the pictures and everything like that. It's just waiting to be announced. There's a lot of things being said about um, it has to wait until the 1st of July because of uh, Dortmund's uh, financial arrangements and something to do with their tax year, etc. Um, now, Borussia Dortmund's sporting director, Michael Zork, he was asked about it yesterday and his quotes are, Things are not completely finalised yet, is what he said. But, you know, that suggests that, you know, that's, yeah, we know it's not finalised because it's not been announced yet. But it's going to happen. Socrates will be joining Arsenal. And um, Arsenal, as we know, are really strengthening the spine of the team at the moment. And that is a good sign. But we're just waiting for this to be announced. I mean, it's the, we, we're not used to this, you know, players... Uh, being bought early and we're just waiting for them to be announced. Normally, with Arsenal, it's the last minute, <laughs> right down to the last minute. So I like the way that the transfer dealings are getting done pretty early this season. That is a really, really positive sign um, by Arsenal. But will they get 
Eva Benega. Now, this is the one that seems to be rolling on and on and on. I spoke to you guys yesterday about the fact that um, Unai Emery called Benega personally to speak to him about joining Arsenal. He would really like Benega. He's worked with him before at Sevilla. Benega, a very talented player, could be in action tonight for Argentina. They got that crunch game against Nigeria, where basically if they don't win that game, they're out of the World Cup. So, again, if they do go out of the World Cup, we find out quicker um, what's going to be happening with that situation. But there's lots of things happening around it. Sevilla apparently coming out today and saying that, listen, we want to keep hold of Benega at all costs. We don't want to lose Benega. Um, and Sevilla saying as well that they're not going to sell him at any cost. Now, Sevilla are not exactly a club, I feel, that you know can afford to... You know, hold on to a player at any cost. They are a selling club. Um, they are a club that worked to a budget. They're a very good club, but they are a club that worked to a budget. And, you know, for a, a good offer comes in for Benega, who's 29, it's going to be very tough for Sevilla to turn that sort of deal, deal down. And as I said, they are the sort of club that will look to buy in a replacement. But they really determined to keep hold of Benega, apparently. They see Benega as one of their main men. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens um, with this. Really interesting to see what the developments will be if Argentina get knocked out of the World Cup and then, you know, Benega's able to return back to Argentina first, of course, and then back to Spain to then sort out his future. So let's keep an eye on that one. I don't think this rumour is going to go away over the next couple of weeks um, forever, Benega. Um, and his move to Arsenal. Uh, Alexander Golovin, he didn't actually play yesterday for Russia. Um, they rested him and it showed. You know, they really, really missed the, um, his creativity and his um, skill. Um, now, we've been told today that um, CSKA Moscow turned down a 19 million, million euro bid from Juventus um, for the services of um, Alexander Golovin. Golovin um, a real star so far in this World Cup for Russia. And as I said, really showed when he was missing yesterday. Um, CSKA is said to be holding out for 25 to 30 million euros. And um, could Arsenal move in and try and make a bid? We know that Arsenal, and I think Liverpool as well, have been quoted of being interested um, in him. But Juve have made the first move to try and bring Golovin in. Who will get their man? We're going to have to wait and see what happens with that one. David Ospino is at the World Cup, having a good World Cup so far. Pulled off some great saves the other night. Um, was being questioned about his future at Arsenal. And uh, he kind of, what, the things he was sort of saying was like, basically, he's unsure what's going to be happening with his future at Arsenal. I remember there's these links linking him with a move to Fenerbahce. Um, Fenerbahce uh, basically, Ospina saying, listen, uh, it will all be sorted out after the World Cup. But the way he's talking, it sounds like uh, David Ospina will be on the move um, this summer out of Arsenal. Now, it was really interesting yesterday. Um, Arsene Wenger, he was speaking to Being Sports. He'd been doing a lot of um, commentary with Being Sports. And he was asked about the Luis Suarez situation ahead of the uh, Uruguay game and how comes Arsenal didn't sign him. And some really interesting quotes um, from Arsene Wenger regarding, we all remember the notorious £40 million plus a pound bid that didn't happen and then Suarez ended up staying um, at Liverpool for another year and then moving on to Barcelona and the rest is history. He's done brilliantly at Barcelona. We're always asking the question, what if we would have got Luis Suarez that summer? How well would we have done in the league? Could we have won the league with a Luis Suarez? Well, Wenger's uh, quotes on it yesterday. He said um, he was very close to signing for Arsenal. We had an agreement with the player. We had wrongly been advised that he had a clause with a, with a minimal clause, but we had an agreement with the player, you can ask him. And he went on to say, I'm convinced he wanted to join us and they would, and they would have sold him. So um, that saga, basically what Arsene Wenger is saying is that he were wrongly advised about the one million and a pound minimal clause. Um, that was written into his contract. Now, I was just wondering to myself, I wonder with the team that Arsenal have in place now, with Raul Sinelli and Sven Mislintat, if this would have went on, if we, you know, a Suarez situation would have arisen, if these guys would just seem a bit more meticulous 
in the transfer market would have got that deal over the line. It seems when you hear what Wenger had to say there, that the whole thing was a real mess, being wrongly advised in such a high profile um, transfer. And a transfer that was obviously, once Liverpool found out that you know their star man was going to be heading to Arsenal, was obviously going to be something that was really going to upset them. And we got it horribly, horribly wrong. Let's hope there's no repeats of that. Um, going forward in the future in Arsenal's transfer dealings. Over the years, it's been an absolute mess. Let's face it. Um, in some, you know, there's been some good deals, of course, Alexis Sanchez, etc. But some of the other deals have really been a mess. And there's no, you know, you can see the reason why, you know, Ivan Gazidis and the board decided to bring in some expertise in this area to try and make sure that transfers go through more smoothly. Uh, finally, um, my player from yesterday, um, William Cavalier, I'm going for today. I know we're probably not going to need him now that we're getting Lucas Torreira in, but I was really impressed by Cavalier yesterday um, in that the holding midfielder position for Portugal. He kept it simple. He broke up play. He was really commanding in the middle of the field yesterday in that game. Um, William Carvalho, if we didn't get Torreira, if anything went wrong for me, go in and get him Arsenal. I really, really like the look of this kid. He's a good player. Um, thanks for watching the show today. We're going to be leaving here um, today um, from Nizhny, heading to Kaliningrad, up to Moscow, and then over to K Kaliningrad. Of course, England going to be playing Belgium um, in the next couple of days. So really, really looking forward to that. It's a real festival of football. I uh, just see, uh, I went downstairs, I saw loads and loads of uh, Costa Ricans checking into the hotel today. Um, fans from all over the world here. This is what it's all about. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching the show and we'll be back tomorrow.